Hi, folks. Welcome back to the Shifting Schools podcast. My name is Trisha Friedman. I am your host for this week. This episode goes out to all of our incredible listeners who write in to ask Jeff and I which AI tools are our favorite. And our answer to that is a little bit maybe frustrating for some because I would not say that we have the favorite tool. What we have, um, I think, our favorite mindsets, dispositions, attitudes towards exploring those tools and always thinking critically about the skills that we need to acquire in order to truly leverage this new AI technology to transform student learning. So while we often say it's not about the tool for us, it's about the driver, we do recognize that there are a number of AI tools out there um, that are really intuitive for educators and um, you know provide sort of a, a, a great access point for beginning to start your journey uh, as an AI literate educational leader. And one of those tools happens to be Ludia AI. We are going to dig into the why on this episode, as well as the how, how you can start using that free tool. Now, one of the reasons that we're big advocates of Ludia AI is because it's all about UDL, which is a topic that has come up multiple times on this uh, on this show. So we will be talking to the two co-founders of Ludia AI, who have some advice for how you can get started to use it. Beth Stark, one of the co-founders, lives in Germany and partners with international schools as a consultant who specializes in UDL implementation. Beth has 16 years of IB international school experience and holds a master's degree in special education. She also serves as the co-chairperson of the UDL IRN implementation special interest group, uh, is an ISTE certified educator and a CPAC certified member of the International Association of Accessibility Professionals. On as well with us, um, again, is her co-founder, Jeremy. Now, for the past 15 years, Jeremy has helped international schools combine academic rigor and student experience through the development of transformative programs. Jeremy is a prolific author. His holistic and innovative approach is regularly featured in leading publications, as well as on his website, where he creates resources for school leaders and educators. Jeremy most recently wrote... AI-powered UDL strategies and is the high school curriculum and instruction coordinator at International School of Panama. Now, if you are wondering how you can get in touch with Beth Stark or Jeremy Rostin, you'll be able to head over to the show notes to learn much more about them as well as about their tool, Ludia AI. Before we get into the heart of our conversation with our special guests, we do have a quick word from this week's show sponsor. Are you in the middle of your teaching career and wondering how to best manage your finances? Money Pickles Financial Advisors specialize in helping educators like us. They offer practical advice on investments, savings, and even navigating pension plans. With Money Pickle, you're not just getting an advisor, you're gaining a financial partner who understands your unique needs as an educator. Head to moneypickle.com slash shifting schools today to sign up for a complimentary no obligation video call with a financial advisor. That's moneypickle.com slash shifting schools. We thank them for being a sponsor of this podcast and of educators at large. And now with that, please welcome to the Shifting Schools podcast, Beth and Jeremy here to talk about Ludia AI. You're both here to talk to us about Ludia, which listeners is a free tool that's going to help educators anywhere leverage AI as a way to, and I'm quoting here, 
basically help you cultivate a UDL mindset. And let's start there. When we're talking about a UDL mindset, how would you describe that? What does that mean? Well, Trisha, one of the foundations of having or working towards a UDL mindset is to view every learner that is in our care um, as capable of achieving at high levels. And when we're working to develop the curriculum or our learning spaces, we always hold the learner in high regard and we also look for the deficits, but not within them. We're always looking to intentionally design to identify and reduce barriers so that every student and every learner can achieve at those high levels that we know that everyone can. Well, and that's where I feel like, you know, sometimes I know when we're talking to educators about AI, I, I think, and you know, I, I understand cynicism and fear around technology, especially technology like AI that has grown at this exponential pace. And we're almost, you know, overwhelmed by constant news stories about it. And sometimes I will hear folks say, you know, I'm really scared of AI removing humanity from the classroom or, you know, taking away the very critical, um, maybe the most critical part about schools, which is our human relationships. And that's where I feel like a tool like Ludia kind of, I would say, shows the opposite, the real opportunity there is to emphasize relationships and to make sure that we're kind of centering the humanity. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, you're both educators, um, you know, to what extent did you feel like maybe a tool like Ludia does confront some of that fear or maybe ease the fear is a better way for me to, uh, to phrase that? Right. So the, the way we've designed uh, Ludia, it lowers the barriers to using AI for, for teachers. So it's, it's very easy and intuitive to use. And one thing it does is it creates a, a space and gives teachers time to do the thinking uh, that they need to be fully present in the classroom. So we, we know teachers are extremely busy uh, and there are many ways they need to adapt instruction on a daily basis to the, to the needs of their learners. And they simply don't always have the time to do it, right? What Ludia does is it helps you, it speeds up the process, it gives you ideas to do this important thinking just more efficiently. So when you might have needed two hours to figure out how am I going to, uh, I need to tweak this math assignment for this group of learners, how am I going to do this? If you don't have the time, you're not going to do it. What Ludia does is it's going to help you come up with options and it lets you do, uh, or first choose between those options, explain them further, adapt them to your context, um, so that you can best serve your learners. Yeah, that that time piece is critical, and you know the the energy as well. As you say, you know a lot of educators are wearing multiple hats, fulfilling so many different roles. And you know, I was excited, of course, to test Ludia out for myself. So bear with me because I'm going to read out a prompt that I tried. And and listeners, if you want to try this prompt for yourself, the text of it will be over there in the show notes for you. So this is my kind of lengthy prompt. Bear with me. I prompted Ludia, quote, I'm planning to organize a book club for adult learners. I'd like to model UDL best practice at that gathering. There will be 15 attendees with a wide range of knowledge about our main topic, which is mental health. We have five different nationalities represented on this team. Our primary goal is to look at ways to communicate our main takeaways from the book with our broader community. Help me plan this media. So that was the prompt. Um, and I'm hoping that's one that will connect with a lot of educators who they're teaching young folks, but they're also organizing professional learning. Uh, they might also have some social components that they're putting on for their community. And I would say that Ludia did a really great job of, A, helping me think through what might be the barriers for entry, as well as really positioning what are the opportunities here for me to model UDL? Like, what is it that I need to consider? And I, you know, I'm thinking about if I were planning that group at the end of a day, and I'm tired, mm -hmm. not only does it save me the time, but it sort of 
it's a really great rough draft tool. It's a really great mm-hmm. thought partner just to kind of get that lift. So, you know, Ludia then also prompted me to continue the conversation with them. So it wasn't just, as you said, like, here's exactly what you should do. It was sort of like, here's some ideas. And it prompted me to continue thinking alongside of it. So I'm guessing maybe after that brief anecdote, I'll have a few listeners who are like, great, I want to try this out. Yes, I also have a book group that I'm planning. Um, For a listener who wants to test it out, and again, it's free, do you have any tips or pieces of advice that you would recommend in terms of, here's what you can do to really get the most out of Ludia? Well, that was a great example that you shared, and it it shows really what people need to bring to the table when connecting to Ludia, which is an open mind and a sense of play. You know, it's really not about perfect prompt engineering or making sure that you phrase things in, in such a way. Ludia is looking for information about your context, your learners, in your case, perhaps your book club members, Um, so that the responses that Ludia gives you are as useful as possible. And if they're not, you know, you don't have to give up. You can continue the conversation because there will be other pathways that are presented at the bottom um, after the initial response. Or you can always, um, you know, ask another question or ask for more details or clarification. So we always... um, encourage people to think about Ludia like an experienced colleague who knows a lot about UDL. And how would you begin a conversation with a colleague? And yeah, just take that same line of thinking with Ludia. That's really great and helpful framing because I think sometimes it's also useful for us to be looking at you know, if we are interacting with a human colleague and asking them for advice, I feel like when we're using AI tools like Ludia, it does remind us that you do often need to clarify. You know, sometimes it's that person might not have understood the most critical part of what you're trying to do. Um, so I, I kind of think we have this really interesting mirror at how we collaborate. So, uh, yeah, I I just I really appreciate that. It seems like by default, it's always going to try to continue or extend a conversation and not just say full stop. Here's what to do. And I I really like that conversational um, piece. Earlier in this academic year, we were very fortunate to interview the amazing Dr. Katie Novak. Um, Lots of listeners of this show will be, of course, a big fan of her work. So I was thrilled, actually, to see that Dr. Novak also has an endorsement of Ludia on her blog. We'll be sure to link to that in the show notes. I'm guessing that you're hearing anecdotes from educators about how they're using Ludia, the impact that it's having. Um, what are some anecdotes that you've maybe heard from folks who are experimenting with Ludia? How is that feedback from other educators useful to you? One thing that was, it wasn't surprising. One thing that was pleasing uh, to hear is how varied the, the range is of people who are using Ludia mm-hmm. and the, the many different purposes. So it, it's great that you, the example that you gave was not a classroom example. It was sort of adult learning and, and outside of the classroom. Um, I found that some administrators have used it uh, to facilitate or to think through faculty meetings or heads of department to, to plan their department meetings, obviously classroom teachers. Uh, some folks from uh, learning support at our school are using it. Some counselors are using it. So it's the whole range of, of actors in the school that can that can benefit from it. Yeah, I'm wondering even um, if you're hearing or you're hoping to hear more from parents and caretakers. That's an audience that I've been working with increasingly because I think this idea of AI literacy, schools have really got to think about that component of making sure that they're bringing parents and caretakers along who can see the potential as well as uh, you know be be aware of some of the limitations. And I'm thinking for someone who's even running a PTA meeting, um, you know, Mm -hmm. or is perhaps looking at coordinating like a community wide garage sale. So sometimes when I work with parents and caretakers, I look at some very practical examples 
Um, you know, the, the home that I'm in now has a furnace and I had never lived in a house that had a furnace before. A few weeks ago where I live, we were having this huge ice storm. And I was like, you know, I don't know if the power goes out. It's a gas run furnace. Will I lose the furnace? So I asked ChatGPT to explain to me um, that component. Um, and the initial response that it gave back was a little too technical. So I had sort of prompted it, you know, I have no understanding and knowledge of furnaces. Explain it to me like I am nine years old. Um, and I shared that anecdote with a, a parent and caretaker group just to sort of, you know, walk them through it. Look, you know, if it's a real emergency, I probably also would double check what ChatGPT told me. But mm -hmm. just the range of opportunities there are for, you know, using AI in our day to day life. And I'm wondering if anything comes to mind for either of you um, of why a school leader who's experimenting with Ludia, why they might also want to make that transparent for their parent caretaker community. Um, you know, I've started doing something when I am working with others in terms of here's where I used AI and here's where I didn't. And here's why I'm just kind of wondering if you have any thoughts on parents and caretakers might also want to explore a tool like yours. Um, if you've got examples or thoughts on that, I'd love to hear them. And thank you for sticking with me. That was the longest question I've asked all year. Well, we have a question for you. Did your, did your furnace hold up? <laughs> I didn't lose power. And the answer okay. was actually, it would have, it would have stopped working. So yes, that's, mm -hmm. I'm glad somebody might have been hanging in there to find out about the furnace. Thanks for asking about that. Well, it, and it brings, it brings to light um, yeah, just the expansiveness of the UDL framework and the research base, which is from birth to, you know, our, our whole lives. You know, we're always learning. And certainly um, our, the parents and guardian, guardians and caretakers of students in our schools are also on a learning journey. Um, one example definitely comes to mind, and that is a work that I, I did with um, a group of early years um, educators and trying to find cooperative approaches for parents who had concerns about attachment and saying goodbye to their children who were very, very young when they were um, dropping them off at school. And, you know, thinking about that in terms of barriers, instead of looking at it and saying, oh, you know, these, these parents, they just need to let go and say goodbye, which was certainly not the, their first response, but we're human and we get frustrated because we want to move on with our days. You know, we have a job to do and routines to stick with. Um, but instead, you know, thinking about it in a very proactive and responsive manner and finding ways to bring the parents in to the routine of saying goodbye, for example, um, was something that Ludia brought to light and added to that um, co collaborative um, exchange. And I really found that to be um, a really great direction. And I think when you're talking about a thought partner, we really wanna be clear that universal design for learning is for everyone. It's a universal framework. And we're not looking to coach people to make the right decisions. We're, we're hoping that Ludia can augment and amplify the wisdom of every educator, every parent, and, and every caretaker, and certainly every leader um, of communities to infuse more UDL thinking into their decision making. Oh, I love that. You're reminding me of a conversation we had, um, uh, you know, going back a few months, where we had a student come on and asked him to really talk about, um, you know, he's a teen, how is it that he sees outside of the classroom uh, for himself and fellow teenagers, how are they using AI in ways that their teachers may not be aware of? And he said, you know, a lot of my friends and I are talking about now how if we're texting and maybe we're having an argument or it's a difficult conversation we're having with a friend, using ChatGPT to kind of play that through and think about mm -hmm. what do I want to say right now? So again, it's just this interesting interplay of can this technology help us, as you're saying, like humans are, you know, varied and diverse and that's beautiful. We're complicated and complex, which also means we enter into conflict a lot. 
So can this be a tool to help us navigate that con- that conflict? And that's such a, a great example, Beth, because I've heard so many folks in early years talk about that. Um, and it's funny because my wife always argues with me when we're dropping our dog off for a haircut. She absolutely hates doing it. She gets very nervous. Um, you know, the the team that looks after our dog, they're wonderful. But uh, my wife always says, because she's got a lot of experience with EY, she's like, the longer you linger, like you're making it harder for our dog too. Um, but uh, I'm going to actually check in with maybe Ludia and ask it for some other recommendations to help me with my mindset about that. Um, do you do you have guidance? Because I love that you say, you know, you don't have to be a wizard at prompting with Ludia to get that kind of feedback. But, you know, research tells us a lot of educators are still very new to using these tools. So somebody who is listening and loves this idea of getting a variety of ideas and approaches to, uh, you know, doing something that's difficult or helping parents and caretakers reframe drop off time. What would you actually imagine they were prompting Ludia with? Um, Can either of you speak to like, here's how you would go to Ludia and actually get that useful feedback. I just, I really want to be transparent and demystify that because I know some folks will say, I don't even know how to ask for that. Right, and, and, I, and I can answer those, the two questions combined, the, the parents piece and then how you, how you best use um, Ludia. Um, and so Ludia can play an important role in those homeschool partnerships. Because what might happen is if, you, if you're lucky enough to have good parent or guardian support at home, for instance, for homework or long-term project, uh, your, your parents are not necessarily teachers or trained teachers. So even the language used at school and at home might not be the same. And the way l- learning is framed at home might not reinforce what we're trying to do at school. Uh, so we might be, for instance, very performance oriented. We say it's very important for your grade, right? We, we're trying to move away from that at school. That might be reinforced at home. So if the parents are using Ludia, they will have that same uh, UDL approach, lens, and language that will reinforce what the school is trying to do. Uh, very much the same, obviously, in, in the case of homeschooling, right, where your your parents are, are investing in your education. They are it, it becomes their, their their own job, but they might not be trained teachers. So Ludia is going to provide. All this, uh, all this help. Now, how would they use Ludia? Uh, there's a bit of a process uh, that we that we created, but the message has to be clear, which is there is not one unique recipe that you have to follow. And if you don't, you're not going to get a good outcome, right? The just chatting with the bot uh, is going to you're going to get a lot out of it. That being said, there are a few things that will make it even better. And what we came up with is a, it's a very simple four-step process, which we, we call the four T's. And those four T's are tell, tinker, tweak, uh, and transfer. So tell is when you tell Ludia what, your, uh, what, your, what the conversation is going to be about. And if you pay attention to what Ludia says, the very first message, Ludia is going to tell you uh, what information might be useful. It's going to tell you or remind you I need to know what age are your learners? Uh, what are your learning objectives? Should I know something about their cultural background? Right. So it's going to ask for uh, as much detail as you can provide. And so that would be the first sort of tip. The, the clearer you are, the more specific you are, the more detail you give, the better the outcome that you're going to, to get. Right. So the, in the tell, be very specific. That would be the, the first tip. Uh, once you tell, you get, you get uh, Ludia's response. You're going to want to tinker, which means it has to be a back and forth to chat with the bot. Mm-hmm. It is going to, as you said, prompt you with follow-ups, right? You have, it's going to tell you, what well, here are potential questions that you want to, to ask me. Feel free to use those or come up with your own, but have this conversation, right? This, it should not be a sort of a one-off interaction. You can also upload documents. So mm-hmm. if, you, if you're a parent, here's the math homework, help me help the kid. Or if you're a teacher, here's my assessment. How can I make it more inclusive? Right. So you can upload documents. Once you get sort of Ludia's final response, the third step is tweak. And what that means is what you get from the AI bot should not be your final product. You still need to adapt it to your own uh, context of 
this particular lesson, this particular week, uh, you, you're going to put the final, you're going to polish and put the, the finishing touches to, uh, to this product. And finally, transfer would be hopefully through this interaction, you have learned something, right, about one of the UDL checkpoints or about a, a teaching strategy, whatever it is, um, as much as possible to scale that and reuse it. So you have now routines that you can always use when you uh, are facing the same challenges and, and share with your colleagues, right? Transfer the learning so everybody benefits from, from, your, from your time and interactions with Lydia. I, right now I know that my co-host and partner, Jeff Udek is incredibly disappointed that he's traveling and he's not available to be a part of this conversation because um, he's been working with the state of Washington on their AI guidelines and the, the first sort of round of advice that they've provided to educators uses something called the HAIH framework. And that is where you've got really the human that's launching the tool, you're getting some output from the AI but on the other end of that is always going to be the human thinking again. And I feel like your four T's model really speaks to that. And, you know, again, I just I feel like it's so important for us to be talking about this because I think every time I hear folks say like AI is going to crush critical thinking, it's going to remove creativity. I feel like it's the opposite. I, I think what it's doing is it's making the thinking process more accessible and more visible. Um, and that's, I love working with educators around, have your students document their conversation, their back and forth with the AI tool that they're using and have them have conversations with their peers around like, oh, I see the detail that you entered there. Or, you know, I, I love doing this with ChatGPT where I'll ask it to evoke a certain emotion because it's really interesting to look at how it will interpret, you know, the different nuances of different emotions in its output. There's a great conversation to be had there. But I really feel like the process you just walked us through is, again, it's talking about metacognition. It's talking about us perhaps being much more aware of how we converse, of how we reflect, of how we make decisions. So, you know, again, I'm just, I'm really thrilled that there is another tool that is here. You know, UDL is so important. I, I don't think any educator would argue that it isn't, that it's not making learning more transformative. Is it sometimes, as you said, time consuming, energy consuming to always be planning at that more detailed, thorough level? Sure it is, right? Like high quality teaching is not easy. It's a craft. It's an art form. Um, but it's great that there is another thought partner. I appreciate that it's free as well. Um, so, you know, folks, I'd encourage you check out the show notes, learn more about Ludia, experiment with it. In closing, I don't know if either or both of you just wants to entice listeners with one other example of if you're brand new to this technology and you're thinking, Okay, Ludia, you're going to be my first entry point into experimenting with AI. Here's just one thing to try out or to tinker with to uh, to use one of your four T's. Do you have any thoughts on, I'm brand new to it. Here's just one thing you might do to try it out. Um, there's definitely a wow effect if you upload a unit planner or a task sheet or an assessment and just ask Ludia, how do I reduce barriers in this assessment? Or how do I make this more inclusive? And, and just wait for the answer because it's usually incredibly and informative and will really help you to see that, that document in a whole new light. That's a great recommendation. Thank you both. I'm looking forward to seeing how Ludia continues to evolve. And I appreciate your time coming on the show and walking us through um, what we can do to take advantage of the opportunity of Ludia. Thank you so much. Thank you. As always, folks, thank you for tuning into the Shifting Schools podcast. I do want to let you know we received feedback from a few fellow listeners who were asking if Jeff and I were going to offer anything specific on AI and feedback. So we've taken your feedback on and coming up this April, we are offering AI fueled feedback. This is a 90 minute webinar on April 9th. We have it priced at an early bird rate from now until March 5th. 
So please head on over to the show notes, learn about our early bird rate and learning with Jeff and I this April. You can also find more on AI fueled feedback by heading over to www.shiftingschools.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week.